and welcome to JHEP's lesson on redox titrations, mostly for OCR, but also suitable for AQA and NXL. So the main the main thing that many people get worried about with this is that they think that redox titration is really really different from the normal titration that they learnt in AS. Technically it isn't. It's mainly because acid and base titration, all we do is transfer protons because acids um, acids are species that are proton donors and bases are proton acceptors. So therefore we are we are moving protons, we're moving H plus ions. Redox titration therefore is, uh, is the transfer of electrons. When we, if you have, if you remember cells and we looked at redox as well in the other video, what we did, we transferred electrons from one side to the other, usually from the oxidizing agent to reduce an agent. And likewise. So, iron, in in your exam, you mostly get iron, just mainly because it is very popular when you want to titrate. Reason? We find them in tablets, uh, in industry, when we want to take them out of iron ores, like hematite. There are so many uses for iron. So, Iron is very important when we titrate and as you can see here it has lost an electron over here and it's gone from an oxidation state of 2 plus to 3 plus that means there are less electrons here that means it has lost electrons so this is an oxidation reaction oxidation reaction and obviously um, the thing is with iron 2 plus is that it's not that stable the most stable one is Fe3 plus that's why you'd always see uh, if you put a car into water you'd usually see rust on it and rust if you if you remember the precipitation reactions uh, Fe3 plus makes a rusty brown kind of precipitate uh, Fe2 plus is green as well just 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 throwing that in there so even though sometimes we can use water to oxidize it, the most the thing that we use the most is actually manganate because manganate is a fantastic st strong oxidizing agent. And what it does, it oxidizes this. So therefore, you think about it, this will have to be reduced. And the thing is, with manganate, it usually comes in as potassium manganate, so it will be K M N. 04. But when we are thinking about titration and such, we're thinking about the ionic equation. And we're only interested in this. So forget about that. And the same thing with potassium dichromate as well. We don't really need to know about the potassium. All we care is about is the chromate ion. So over here, we have got MnO4 minus. There's two ways you can remember this. Number one, you can just remember this through rote. Or the second one, you can actually think about how would we act, how would we actually get this equation and since this is in um, in uh, aqueous solution we would want this manganate over here to turn from the oxidation state it is now which is plus seven to the oxidation state here plus two because these are the two common oxidation states of manganate plus seven and plus two so how is it actually going to do that well number one it needs to get rid of uh, of the oxygen and usually if since we're in solution we have got H plus ions floating place uh, floating everywhere and we need eight H plus ions to join with the oxygen to make H2O and as you can see here four times two we've got eight hydrogens here and four oxygens there that's why we have eight hydrogens there and we've got four oxygens there and when that happens the manganese, um, the, the, the manganese, yeah, yes, yeah, manganese, isn't it? The manganese is still a plus seven, so we need to uh, we need to gain five electrons for it to become a two plus. Okay, for it to be reduced, because remember, reduction is the gain of electrons. So this manganese over here is gaining five electrons to make a plus two ion. If you put this all together, uh, if you're not sure how to put it all together, we that is in the redox uh, video, I think. But very quickly, we need five of each to cancel it out. We need five electrons here. So we need five um, iron two ions 
and five iron three ions for it to be compatible for here. So if we were to write it out fully, it would be Mn O4 Acreus minus plus eight H plus Acreus plus five E minus Acreus plus five F E two plus Acreus goes to Mn two plus Acreus plus four H two O Acreus plus five F E three Acreus three plus Acreus plus the 5e minus. Obviously these cancel out, so therefore we're left with this. This is one of the things, this is one of the important things that you need to learn or remember for your exam. It's up to you uh, if you want to learn it like rote or if you want to derive it from which we did. Some of the questions may ask you to actually start deriving it, so I'd learn it that way, but it's up to you. So have a look at this typical redox titration question. It is on page 221 of the book. And it says here that we've got this multivitamin tablet containing all of these things. Um, and we've, we basically put a mass of it into water and into a little dilute sulfuric acid. We usually use sulfuric acid because it doesn't react with the manganate. If we use hydrochloric acid, well, yeah, you'll be given off chlorine gas and it would react, basically it would react with the manganate and that is definitely not what we'd want. So, we use sulfuric acid. Usually when you see sulfuric acid and iodine, we're talking about a normal redox. When you hear um, iodine and thiosulfate, that's a different thing that we're going to come up and solve in the next one. So, over here, we also have 12.1 uh, centimeters cubed of this concentration of potassium manganate and we need to calculate the percentage mass. This is technically AS stuff. The first thing which I like to do, I mean not a lot of people, not a lot of people do it, but I like to write the equation first. And seeing as I have the equation here, I'm just going to copy and paste it here. Okay. So, uh, I think that didn't come up. So, Forgetting about the, forgetting about the, the electrons over here, ah, forget about the electrons over here, and forget about the, what the product is actually. Let's just focus on this. So, we have all this information here, and I like to put them in the relevant department, should I say? So we've got 0 0.325 of powder tablet dissolved in water and 12.1 centimeters cubed of potassium and manganate. So I'm going to write it here. I'm going to write 0 0.0121 decimeters cubed. Um, I've automatically, I've, oops, I've automatically changed it into decimeters cubed just for ease. And we've also have this mold over here, which is 0 0.002 which is the concentration and that's the volume. So instinctively, I'd be able to find out the moles by doing N equals C times V. And that will be 0 0.121 times 0 0.002. And that would make, that will make 2.42 times 10 to the minus five moles, okay? Now, over here, we need to find out how many moles of iron reacted with the manganate ion. And as you can see here, the ratio, the stoichiometric ratio over here is 1 to 5. So that means for each one of these, 5 of these reacted. So therefore, what we need to do is to multiply that by 5, and that would make 1.21 times 10 to the minus... Four. So we've got the amount of moles of this reacted. Now, what we need to do, we have got the number of moles here, and we need to find out the mass of this. We have also got the MR. We know what the MR is. If we look at the periodic table, it tells us that the MR is 55.5. Let me just double check. 55.8, actually, sorry. 55.8 and using the n equals m over mr and then rearranging it to make n times mr equals m we can find out what the mass is of the iron in there 
So let's do that very quickly. That would be 1.21 times 10 to the minus 4 times 55.8. And that would make 0 0.00675 grams and now all we need to do this is how much iron is in there okay and now to calculate the percentage of it what we need to do we need to divide it by the overall mass of the tablet which is 0 0.325 grams remember they need to be in the same unit and we need to times it by 100 don't forget to times it by 100 even if you are a mathematician you do need to still write 100 times 100 there and that would make 2.08%. As you can see, not a lot of iron in there. So that is it for redox titrations. My next video will cover past paper questions on redox titrations, and hopefully, my other video will cover uh, using iodine and thiosulfate.